We're going to talk about wormers, um, or dewormers, let's say. You should worm your horse uh, multiple times a year. You don't want to overdo it. Uh, what I like to do is I worm my horses um, at change of season. That way, it, it seems like when you ever have troubles, it's always a change of season. So here, uh, it's spring here right now. We've already dewormed everybody. Just about the time uh, the buttercups came up and uh, the grass started coming up, we uh, went through the herd and uh, and dewormed everything. Um, and then probably Fourth of July, and then I like to wait about till first frost in the fall, and then just do it on an as-needed basis. We rotate the wormers and. Uh, we use different ones every time. That's a good idea. And usually we buy the Ivamec and the uh, wormers that you can buy for three, four bucks a tube uh, and do most of the deworming with that. And then try to once a year use the good wormer. It, it has uh, the ingredients in it that will, and you read the label, it'll tell you what uh, uh, parasites uh, it addresses but the main thing is once a year you need to try to use one that gets tapeworms um, the cheap wormers will not get the tapeworms and when you get horses that uh, have been around a confined area around a lot of other horses like in a muddy lot or uh, in confinement you're going to occasionally find one that have a, a tapeworm so uh, if a horse gets hollowed down his back you notice Petey's back's full here I'm not worried about him He's in good shape, but if a horse gets kind of hollow down his back, normally he's got a tapeworm. Uh, and you know, use it on an as-needed basis. If a horse looks like he's falling off a little bit or he's struggling, go ahead and just give him a warmer. It won't hurt him. Uh, sometimes we'll get a horse in that's been roughing it a little bit, and uh, I'll warm him every day with the cheap warmer every day for a week. And uh, what happens is you got to catch those parasites in their uh, cycle. They, they lay eggs and the legs, eggs hatch and so on and so forth. So um, another thing that I found that if you put a pinch of sulfur in their food every day, uh, it seems like the sulfur, uh, and I have no scientific proof of this, but it works. Uh, it kills the microorganisms uh, like Giardia uh, and even maybe even the larva of the parasite. It, you know, it's not expensive and it doesn't hurt a thing and it works. And uh, we've done fecal tests on horses. We fed sulfur and ones we didn't and it was very evident the ones we fed sulfur uh, did not have the parasites that the other ones did. Um, so, you know, we've studied that for many years and we've tried to apply traditional horsemanship that long before there were wormers, they used all kinds of things to deworm their horses and one of them was sulfur. So um, the sulfur, I showed you in another video, it's this powder. You get it at the feed mill. You need to take a pinch of that and put it in their feed. Okay. Now, <clears throat> one thing I want to go over now is, is how to worm your horse and how to do it properly and get him to where he accepts it. We, we wormed probably, oh, I don't know, around 100 head of horses here in the last week or so and probably all of them with the exception of one or two took the wormer gladly but those horses have been handled correctly we walked right up to all of them and caught them and gave them their wormer gave them their vaccination and everything was fine but we didn't make it an unpleasant experience and the people that work here and the people that do that understand that if you do get one that doesn't want to do it properly well we're going to stop right there and we're going to get it worked out we're not going to fight with him we're not going to force it on him, okay? So, your typical wormer looks like this here, okay? And what I try to do is get the horse to where he he's okay with it. And rather than coming up and just jabbing it in there and squeezing the terrible taste and stuff out, you know, I'll take and... If a horse I see is a little reluctant to take it, I'll take my rope, okay, and I'll just get him used to 
something being in his mouth, okay? And I'll pull that rope through his mouth. Let him chew on the rope if he wants to and just kind of get him used to his mouth being handled. And then maybe I'll just take my thumb and just go around the corner of his gum. And then I'll take this and then I'll just go like this. And then, you know, I'm not going to squirt it out. Another good way to do it is to come down the side of his mouth and jaw, okay, and then just go in like that. Rather than going like this, just bring it down like this, okay. Another thing I do, get you some molasses, okay. And I'm not going to do it because it gets all sticky, but like you get a dowel rod that's about the same size as a wormer. You stick it down in that molasses like this, okay. So let's pretend I stuck that in the molasses. And then I just take that dowel rod, just like it's the wormer, okay. With that molasses in there. And I promise you, he's going to like that, okay. I'm going to go like this. Then I'm going to take it out. Then I'm going to come like this. Stick it through. Come back like that. And then, once we've got it to where you watch, when you do this, he'll go looking for it. Um, and you can also dip a little molasses on the end of your wormer uh, before you put it in. But we'll get horses in here. And it's clearly evident when you go to worm them, they've had some rigmarole going on with some human somewhere where they've been fighting with the wormer. They see you coming, they'll stomp their feet and snort and pick their head straight up in the air and they know what's going to happen. Well, that's unacceptable behavior and we don't allow that. And uh, sometimes it might take you a little time and a little patience to get that worked out. But, you know, Deworming is a big part of this horse's life. It happens multiple times a year and it, it doesn't need to be a ruckus. And if you've got a horse that won't take a wormer, in my opinion, it's just a display of poor horsemanship on somebody's part somewhere. But uh, you've got to prepare these horses for their life and what they have to encounter, one of which is deworming. And then there's a whole list of other things that has to be handled in a way where he's not threatened by it and he's not afraid. But if you just walk up to him and jab some wormer in his mouth that tastes bad, you know, you, they got apple flavor, they've got every kind of thing you can get to worm them, but it's not necessary to get the flavored ones. Uh, if you keep a little molasses, you don't have to even use the molasses every time. But, you know, as you can see, Petey here, he's okay with it. Well, that didn't happen by accident. You know, the first time or two we did it when he was young, I'm sure we took our time and we made sure that we handled it in a procedure that uh, he wasn't threatened or he wasn't afraid and uh, he's okay with it. So, you know, just little tips like that that, you know, if I can help you with that help you navigate some of these things that are just very common problems that are just so avoidable and so unnecessary. Uh, if you just think about what's going on and take your time and, uh, you know, I always say measure twice and cut once and take your time. And, you know, this horse right here, he could be the toughest, worst outlaw in the country, or he can be the nicest horse in the world. It's how you approach it and approach things like this. So with that, you know, that's, that's how I recommend you deworm your horse. Um, just try to make it a pleasant experience, and um, you'll get along just fine.